Hey guys, so we all know how one of the biggest challenges in building artificial organs is creating the vasculature, the immense network of blood vessels and capillaries that in essence power these man-made tissues. Now there have been ways to construct artificial blood vessels using 3D printers, but Ali Kadamosini and his colleagues thought that that was too elementary and so have revolutionized the process to the extent where vascularized printed organs may finally be within reach. Let's check it out. <laughs> I guess to explain this game-changing new method, I'd first have to talk about the outdated way of creating artificial blood vessels. Using 3D printers, we'd first print sugar substrates, coat the outsides with cells, and then dissolve the sugar inside. The new way that Karamosini and his colleagues tackle this project is by printing sugar tubes, embedding them inside a hydrogel, and then filling the channels with blood cell precursors. Not only that, because creating artificial organs is an excruciatingly difficult process that requires immense precision, if the blood vessels you create for the organ are even slightly off, then the organ will fail to work. That's why this blood vessel work is so important, because before you can even think about creating an organ, the vasculature needed to sustain it is far more important. Regardless of how you choose to create these blood vessels, I feel that both ways are incredibly important to our understanding of biotechnology, and I want to show you a few video clips before we go any further. To provide energy to artificial implants, you need a blood supply. The basis for this is this organic ink that is used to print blood vessels. And this is done on a specific inkjet printer. The organic ink is printed layer by layer to create three-dimensional tubes that have the same properties as blood vessels. The printer works with high precision in the sub-millimeter range but the finest blood vessels require even greater precision. Laser pulses structure the hardening polymer with a precision down to a few thousandths of a millimeter. The printing technology permits a range of forms and sophisticated blood vessel geometry for much better blood flow than with conventional materials. The researchers use simulations and experiments to optimize the form of their artificial vessels. Besides the form, particular attention is also given to the material used in the organic ink. The synthetic polymers must be biocompatible. They must fit the human organism. Unfortunately, not a soul in all of science media can ascertain the exact sequence of steps taken by Kadam Hosseini and his team. But let's look at the human body for inspiration. The body's preferred way of making blood vessels is for a close-knit group of cells to form a lumen, which is basically a hollow space containing only fluid. Now you may be asking yourself, how do cells create hollow space? Well, an individual cell first forms its own lumen within itself from intracellular vacuoles, and then through some membrane wizardry, these intracellular lumens join together and become contiguous extracellular space. Every organ had to go through this process and each had its own version of events, each influenced by the unique chemical function of that organ. For now, researchers are just hoping to get stable structures that hold up to the fluid pumped through them at physiologically realistic pressures. The reason Kadam Hosseini's model works so well is because the blood cell precursors he uses are very similar in function and pressure gradient to the blood cell linings that coat our vessels in our body. Before the finished blood vessel from the printer is ready for transplantation, it has to be coated with biomolecules so that living cells can easily dock onto it. So the researchers use a bioreactor to grow a dense layer of endothelial cells on the inner walls of the vessels they have printed. This is a requirement for optimum and trouble-free blood flow in the organism. But I want you guys to keep in mind that the outdated way of 3D printing blood vessels is still very consequential in a burgeoning biotech industry. So just because these technologies are constantly being revised, it doesn't mean we won't see all of them in the near future. If you learned anything today, hopefully it would be that bioprinting blood vessels is a multifaceted process. And regardless of how you choose to carry out such an operation, stay tuned because this is our key to a future of man-made organs and tissues. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.